Welcome to the Pinnacle Cart Advanced Training Webinar. This webinar here will be focusing on the template engine system that Pinnacle Cart uses. We'll be explaining the back end structure of our file system and how Pinnacle Cart manages HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We've developed the application in a way uh, to basically separate the PHP from the HTML and the CSS. The goal here is allow you to make visual modifications to the site without actually affecting functionality of the shopping cart itself. Um, I do want to make sure that's understood that this webinar here is focusing on how to make edits to the shopping cart's visual appearance within the files themselves, um, not to be mistaken with using the cart designer that we have. Um, this cart designer is available on the screen that you see here. Um, this is the appearance settings screen. This screen is accessed by logging into the admin area of Pinnacle Cart and go Cart's Cart Designer link. Um, but again, this webinar here is explaining how to not use that tool and instead make changes directly to the files themselves. Um, we have a very unique template engine system, and because of that, it's important that you, you understand how to properly make changes in our shopping cart. Um, yes, we're using HTML and CSS, but we're using it in a, in a way that is, is not familiar to most, um, and that's why we're having uh, some advanced training here to show people how, how to get things accomplished. Now, the first most important thing I, I want to make sure that everyone does read through thoroughly if they are making changes on the back end of Pinnacle Cart is our Pinnacle Cart design documentation. This is a printable PDF. This PDF uh, has been recently updated and is almost 60 pages long. Um, now, this PDF is available on our website. And right here, I'm already on the support page of Pinnacle Cart. This was accessed just by going to pinnaclecart.com clicking on the support button here. Once we hit this page, you'll notice underneath the picture of the girl here, there's a link that says Pinnacle Cart Design Documentation version 3.7. This is the PDF that I'm talking about here. I've already clicked this browser and it opened up a tab. And uh, you can see here it is a 57-page document. We would ask you to read this thoroughly if you do plan on making changes in the back end. What I will be doing here is giving you a thorough explanation of the concepts involved, and hopefully you can take what I've shown you and work from there to achieve your goals. Now, the first thing we want to talk about when it comes to our template engine system is the hierarchy and the structure of things. There is a total of four folders within Pinnacle Cart that control HTML and CSS. And these four folders are listed right here on the screen. And I'll explain them to you. The base template folder, also known as the base engine files or the core files, um, those are going to reside in the content folder. Inside the content folder, there's an engine folder. Inside the engine folder, there's a design folder. Inside the design folder, there will be a folder for some CSS files, there's going to be a folder for some HTML files, and a folder for some JavaScript files, and a folder for some images. And I can actually show you that now so you can get a little bit more familiar with the structure of things. Um, go back to Pinnacle right here. You can also click File Manager from the quick links on the left and get to the same place. Either way, it's just a simple uh, file manager that's accessible through the web and it allows you to see all of the files on the server. Now let's take a look at that engine folder I was talking about. So we're going to go to content, engine, design. and inside here you're going to see the, the folders I was mentioning. There's a folder for all of the images. There's a folder for JavaScript. There's a folder for styles, which is going to be the CSS. There's a folder for templates, which is going to be some HTML. And since this is an engine folder, there are also some themes, which is uh, part of the essential framework of, of the cart, and which would have reside in this themes folder here. Going back to the design documentation, the next folder to pay attention to here is content forward slash skins. Inside of content forward slash skins, there will be a folder for each skin within Pinnacle Cart. Um, upon fresh install of Pinnacle Cart, the new version comes with about 15 different templates. Um, each of those templates are available on the template library, as I'm calling it, which is uh, basically this page here, which is again cart settings, appearance settings. Um, and notice all templates that are available with Pinnacle Cart are, are here, and we can activate them by clicking this link. And I'll show you on the back end, if we go to content, the all aim skins right here. And again, there's a folder for 
each and every skin that exists. The third folder to pay attention to is the custom folder, also known as underscore custom. Um, that folder resides in content forward slash skins forward slash underscore custom. Underscore custom is basically going to contain all of the changes that are made using the visual tool, our editing tool. Um, since we're not really going to be discussing the use of the design, pretty much anything in underscore custom here is, is going to be admitted. Uh, underscore custom again is used when the tool is used. Since you're going to be making changes on the back end and the tool won't be used at all, we really won't be discussing underscore custom too much. Um, the last folder to pay attention to is the compiled folder, which you can see is content cache skins. Inside of that, there will be the name of the folder that actually activated. So if I've activated, for example, this modern Vista skin, when the cache is compiled, there will be a modern Vista folder that resides in content forward slash cache forward slash skins. Now, basically what happens here, and again, I, I, I do ask you to read this entire document here, it does explain that we have a tiered or a layered platform um, that essentially compiles files into one single directory. This single directory is then used by the browser when the storefront is accessed, and that is the cache folder. So anytime we load a browser and, and we uh, hit one of the Pinnacle Card Index pages, it's pulling all of the HTML and the CSS from the content cache skins forward slash skin name directory. Um, inside of that, there will be any and all HTML and CSS and JavaScript for the shopping cart that you see. Now this folder gets compiled several different ways. During normal usage of the shopping cart, this compiled folder um, gets rebuilt when the editor, the designer, the visual tool is actually exited. So you would launch the tool, you'd make some changes, and then you'd exit and that would recompile the cache. Now again, remember the changes that you would be making in the tool would be saved to the underscore custom folder. Um, and then basically what the cart does is it compiles everything to the cache folder. And, and the logic works at, like this. It first looks in the underscore custom, and it looks in the underscore custom for every single HTML and CSS file that it knows that it needs. Now, chances are they're not all going to re reside in underscore custom because, again, underscore custom is where all of the tools edits have been saved, and 99% of the time there's really no way for people to make all edits in the builder and then have it reside in underscore custom. So any changes that have been made within the editor in underscore custom, and the cart looks for any and all HTML files in underscore custom first. And again, it's probably not going to find all of them, so for the pieces that it's missing, it then reverts to the skin that is currently active. It might find some more HTML and CSS to find there, and lastly, if there's any other things that it's still missing, it pulls the remaining pieces from content engine design. And so basically, the card is looking at underscore custom, trying to find anything and everything. If it can't find everything, then it looks in the skins folder. If it still is missing some stuff, then it goes to the engine folder. Once it sees everything that it needs to see, it compiles it to the cache folder. And again, this, this compiling usually occurs during exiting of design mode. Um, I will show you uh, later here how to enable dev mode, which will um, automate this process a little bit easier. Now, in the, this particular situation where we have this compilation going on here, when things are being pushed to this cache directory, there is going to be situations where a particular CSS class, for example, may actually be defined in all three places. Now, in content engine design right now, upon fresh install of Pinnacle Cart, there are all the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, every file that the cart needs as far as uh, visual stuff goes, already exists in the engine folder. What exists in the content skins folder are any minor modifications to the essential framework. So in the engine folder, it's basically a bunch of bland CSS and every single HTML element that exists. At this skin folder, normally, depending on the skin you use, it's usually just a modification of CSS. As you can see here, these template 3705, 3700, 3707 
all of these templates here, all of these templates here basically um, are a modification of the base template. So there's uh, some CSS that's overlapping the basic framework. So back to here, the content engine design is the basic framework. Content skins is some probably some modification to CSS that overrides the base level. And then again, underscore custom would be any changes that would have been made on top of the skin. So I have activated modern Zip Vista, for example. I've edited something in the designer. Those changes are saving to underscore custom. When I exit, the card is taking those changes from underscore custom, giving those precedence over the changes from the skin folder, and then again over the engine folder. And so back to the example, if I've made a CSS change, the CSS change, the original CSS class is definitely defined at the design level. Um, let's say it's a category box, just like this example here. The category box, the header is saying gray at the engine level, or at the base level, as it says here. Now, the skin that I have activated has actually defined the background of the header to be teal. Now, I have also launched the editor, and in the editor, I have used the, the tool to make the background pink. The outcome in this particular situation is going to be the background being pink. And because why? Underscore custom has precedence over the other two. This CSS class is defined in three different locations, yet the underscore custom location has precedence over the other two. And so it's overriding what the skin is saying, and it's also overriding what the engine is saying. So there's some more examples of that concept here. So imagine that the base is still saying that it's gray, the skin is still saying that it's teal, and I have not used the editor. An example of this would be a fresh install of Pinnacle Card. Because of this, the outcome is going to be teal. Because again, the skin uh, directory has precedence over the engine directory. Um, underscore custom has precedence over everything, but since nothing has been defined, the cart has reverted back to the next level up, which is then skin. And so as you can see, the outcome there would be teal. Another example would be, again, the base being gray. This particular situation, the skin has not defined any modification to the background of the header. So it's still gray at this point. Now, underscore custom has said that it's going to be pink. The outcome is going to be pink because, again, underscore custom has precedence over skin and over base. The last example, I'm sure you'll catch on at this point, would be no declaration of CSS at either the skin level or the underscore custom level. So in this particular situation, the outcome is also gray because the CSS class is only defined in one place, therefore it's only going to be pulling from that location. Now we are using all of the basic languages within the shopping cart, HTML, CSS, and script. Um, there is of Ajax and jQuery, but most importantly we want to make sure that you understand we are using Smarty. Smarty is the web template system for PHP that we have utilized. Um, basically it's a bunch of if statements but it does use dollar signs in, in, in uh, some particular tags, and you do need to know how to work around Smarty here if you are adding curly brackets to any HTML. And so you can take a look at the working around Smarty suggestions here. Um, again, we do want you to read through this full document, but I am pointing out specific areas of this document that uh, we want to make sure you pay extra attention to. And when using any code that has curly brackets, for example, this little Google tracker, um, you need to actually wrap literal tags around your code. Um, there's an example of doing it one way here. There's also an example of doing it another way here, which is not wrapping the entire chunk of code around literal tags, rather than just wrapping literal tags around the open and close curly bracket. The same would apply for PHP. You can't use the normal, regular, open and close PHP tags. You actually have to use PHP tags that are using curly brackets instead. Now, if you are planning on editing files on the back end, you are going to want to design your own custom template. Um, creating a custom template is actually quite easy, and there are several options here. You can create a template completely from scratch, you can copy an existing template that we have and then make modifications on top of it. Um, 
really the only thing that we ask you is keep the same file structure that our card has. So, you know, as far as all of the hierarchy of the different folders, that needs to stay the same way that it is. You can add to it. You're more than welcome to add additional folders and then make respective calls to them. And also the other uh, thing that we ask you to keep is the CSS. We need you to keep the CSS files named the way that they are, and we need you to keep the CSS classes named what they are. The definitions or the settings for those particular classes, of course, you can change, but the actual class name itself needs to say the same, and the CSS file that it resides in needs to say the same. Um, on this note, yes, you can add your own new CSS classes, and you can either add those to the existing CSS files, or you can make your own CSS files and then make calls. But again, we want you to keep the hierarchy of things the way that it is, and you want, we want you to keep the naming convention of things the way that it is. Now, with that being said, the steps to creating a new skin are first to make a new folder inside of contents skins. In this example here in the design documentation, the new skin that we are making is named My New Skin. As you can see, there's a folder that, that's been uploaded to the content skins directory. After that, you're going to want to create the hierarchy that I was talking about here. Um, there's a default folders zip file that you can download from Pinnacle Cart's website. Again, you can also copy uh, an additional, uh, another skin to, to get the same hierarchy here. But inside of the My New Skin folder, you want to upload the hierarchy that you see here. You also will have to make a skin.xml file. This skin.xml file basically is telling the shopping cart what to display in the quote unquote template library, which is this little area here. Now, as you can see, in this particular shopping cart, I've actually made a skin here. It's called Super Cool Skin. And as you can see, it's one of the skins that's available here. I can even activate it and preview the skin if I wanted to. And this e exists because I have uploaded a skin to the Content Skins folder. As you can see, there's a Super Cool Skin folder here. Inside this folder, you will see all of the, the folders that would you know, contain my JavaScript styles and HTML and images customizations that I've made. Um, but right now we're talking about skin.xml, so let me edit skin.xml and show you that I've defined the title, the name, the auth, the path to the thumbnail, and the full size in this little XML file. Of course, you want to make sure you use this exact syntax, so you can probably copy and paste out of the design doc or from another skin if you'd like. But this skin.xml is basically what controls what the cart shows on this page here. Um, it is important to keep this, the name, the name field needs to be exactly the same name as the folder name. It can't have spaces in it. This will cause a problem. It needs to be exactly the same. Now back to the design documentation here. After you create Scott XM, let me scroll through this here. Now you're going to start wanting to make changes to the site. And what you will basically want to do is put all of your modifications inside of this skin folder. Um, the point that I'm trying to make here is I would only ask you CSS and HTML that is modifying the base files. My point here is you should not be copying over all of the files from the engine folder into this folder here if you are not editing all of those files. The only thing that should exist in this super cool skin is the modifications that would be made on top of the engine files. And um, the reason why is because of upgrades. The reason why we have even designed this whole system is because of upgrades. We don't want your visual changes to disappear when an upgrade is taken in. And if you follow the steps that we are outlining here, that will never happen because the upgrade won't know about the folder that your modifications are residing in. It's not going to know about the underscore custom folder ever, and it's not going to know about any custom skin that you make. It will, from time to time, update the engine files, and it will, from time to time, update the default skins that Pinnacle Cart comes with. And again, if your modifications are not in either of those three places, you are going to be safe, and that's why making a, a new skin is the best and preferred way of doing things. 
This also gives you the ability to develop a skin and then pass the skin off to an end client so then they can make modifications on top of it. So for this super cool skin, for example, um, you know, this was developed for me by a designer. Um, I would be able to activate it and then go into Card Designer and then maybe change the logo or change some colors around, make some minor modifications on top of the skin. And the good thing about this is, remember, when they're using the designer, their changes are saving into underscore custom rather than overriding the files that you provided for the skin. So they aren't actually editing the template, they're editing another area which is overlapping on top of the template. So if they make any changes that something they have to remove those changes from underscore custom, the template itself has been preserved the entire time. So editing files, again the only files that you should put in your skin folder are files that you have modified. And here's an example of this. You're editing the footer. So you are actually going to want to copy footer.html from content engine design templates layouts zone footer.html. You'll copy that file to the same pathing, but instead in your new skin folder. So you would grab footer.html and throw it inside of content skins, my new skin name, templates, layouts, zone footer.html. Then you can edit footer.html and make any and all changes that you want. Um, again, all HTML and CSS can be edited in Pinnacle Cart. There are no restrictions as far as visual customizations go. Um, the only restrictions we have are the language that are, languages that are used. There's, there's really nothing that uh, can stop you from making changes here. Another example would be editing the home page. Um, grabbing the home.html from template pages site in the design folder and then moving that to the skin folder. Custom CSS is going to be quite easy. There's one file that you're going to be editing, which is ni nice and easy. You're going to make a file named skin.css, which is going to reside in the styles folder of your skin folder. Inside this skin.css file, you can define all of the CSS classes. And again, you can make your own classes as long as you make calls to them using HTML. Um, but yes, yeah, skin.css is basically going to be the master file for you where you can put all of your CSS classes in. Now let's go back here. I want to show you the rebuilding of the cache. Now, as I normally say here, rebuilding the cache is done by design mode. And again, that's by entering the tool, exiting the tool. Upon exiting, the car is recompiling the cache folder. It's taking a look at what it sees in underscore custom, trying to find everything. Then it's going to the skin folder, trying to find anything that's missing. And then lastly, it's reverting to engine to find the, the remaining pieces. We know that that is tedious, and if we're making changes on the back end, even just a small CSS change, it is quite a pain to have to go into the application and launch the tool and exit before you even see that change take effect on the, on the storefront. So what we've developed here is this little dev mode. Um, it's quite easy to enable down here. You're simply going to edit the connection string of the shopping cart. Uh, the connection string here is found in the engine underscore config file which is found in the content forward slash engine folder. So the file is engine underscore config dot PHP, which is found in content which engine. Be careful when editing this file, again, this is the connection string for the shipping. So this tells the cart where the database is and how to connect to it. Um, it also has your license key in there as well. Um, the last line in here, you can actually define dev mode as, as is shown here in the design doc. Now, Turning dev mode on is, is shown right here. It's using the same syntax as the rest of the lines are using and then just saying dev mode is true. Turning off dev mode would either involve remove line entirely or changing the word true to false. Um, and this does is this forces the shopping cart to recompile the cache folder as soon as the storefront is accessed by a browser.
And so if you think about this for a minute, you definitely want to turn this off if you expect any type of traffic to the site because it's definitely going to be a strain on, on not only um, you know, the application but the server itself. Um, the server is going to have to rebuild every single HTML and CSS file every time the index page is refreshed. So, you know, again, if you're expecting any traffic, make sure to turn it off, but it definitely helps during development. So all you have to do is edit your CSS uh, in skin.css in your skin folder. Uh, after you've turned on dev mode, just go to the storefront and click F5, and it will uh, refresh the cache, and you will see your change take effect instantly. Without rebuilding the cache again, you're not going to see any changes take effect because the cache is where the browser is pulling the CSS from, and you aren't making changes right in the cache. You shouldn't be. Um, that is a common mistake that we see people make, is making changes directly in the cache folder. Um, using a development tool like Firebug, for example, um, which is something we do suggest you use. Um, you know, Firebug allows you to pull CSS class right off of any web page just by looking at it and using the tool. But if you look a little bit deeper in, in Firebug, you'll notice the, the, the file that it's referencing is, is pathed to the cache folder. And without knowing our structure of things, we've seen people make changes directly to the cache folder because that's where they're getting it from, from Firebug. Now, that does make their change take effect instantly. But the, the problem here is as soon as the editor is used, those changes are completely wiped out because the cache folder has been rebuilt and it's you know, rebuilding using what it sees in underscore custom and skin, and the particular person had not edited the files, they only edited cache, and again, their, their change is going to be wiped out. So, you know, there are some, some concepts here that um, will be understood, again, if this document is read in full, but making a skin is the best way of customizing Pinnacle Cart and allows you to do anything and everything you want to do. There's, again, really no restrictions. There's a lot of design tools out there, if you don't know about them already, that we'd suggest you use, which are shown on this page here. Um, Firebug for Firefox, which is a little add-on, is, is actually one of the most popular, and then second to that is probably the uh, development tools for uh, Google Chrome. Um, either way, it's, those tools are going to help you quite a bit, since you don't know our naming conventions yet. Um, it's it's going to you know take you some time to figure out what classes control what. Um, so you can use some development tools like this, and in addition to that, we've also defined every single CSS class in this document, which I'm sure will help quite a few people. In the appendix here, if you go to the CSS reference list, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We've broken them down into different sections. You will see all of the card's CSS classes and the uh, little description for what it controls. Remember, you can grab all of these CSS classes and put it into skin.css, which would reside in the skin folder that you loaded. Now, I want to show you a example layout so you can get an understanding of how things are compiled. Remember, we are using Smarty, and we are using a unique system. And not be here, but let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is a screenshot of a particular template. On any given page within Pinnacle Cart, you're not looking at one HTML file. You're actually looking at anywhere from probably 15 to 30 different HTML files. For every visual element on a page, it's usually going to be its own actual HTML file, and this is explained and shown to you here in a couple different examples. So this is a, one of our 3700 templates. Notice the black navigation bar at the top here, which allows us to log in and out of the cart and see the items in the cart. Um, this is outlined with the blue border. It's number one. This is its own HTML file down here. This is templates, layouts, zones, navigation.html. Same thing applies here for the header where the logo exists, where it says Boss Electronics here, number two, which is outlined in red. This right here is its own H file, which is templates, zones, header.html. Same thing for here, number three, this is menu.html. Each one of these boxes or panels that you see on both the left and the right hand side 
are their own HTML files. The container which these boxes reside in is also an HTML file, number four and number five, left.html, right.html. If you were to edit left.html, then you would see the calls in here to display these other boxes. Footer.html, right here, number 12. So on any given page that you're looking at, it is not just one or two HTML files. Whichever element there is its own HTML file. Um, so definitely do keep that in mind. Um, one thing that is, is probably going to, to be a, a question for a lot of people is, well, where's the head portion then? Um, because as we all know, you know, a head portion of, a, of an HTML page is usually not something visual. And so it's going to be a, a little bit more difficult to edit a file like that, but that's, that's no problem. We've already acknowledged that, and we'll show you how to fix that. Um, I, the whole entire website is loaded from default.html. Default.html has calls to display everything else. And as you can see here, this is where the head file is. The head part is actually in this element head.html file. Now, we've explained how to edit this up here in the document a little bit farther. Remember, I am jumping around this document. I would want you to read it thoroughly. Um, but going back here, taking me just a moment, under Files Not to Touch, The element-default-head.html is not the file that you should be touching. The file that you should be touching is actually named element-custom.head.html. So it's element-custom that you need to edit, not element-default. Element-default has some calls that need to always be in there in order for the template to actually show up properly. Um, there's no reason for you to ever need to edit this element default head. All of your customizations can go into element-custom-head.html. So if you need to make some calls to some JavaScript files, for example, which is normally done in the head portion of an HTML file, this is the exact file that you want to edit. And as you can see, we've given you the path as well. It's going to be content forward slash skins forward slash the name of the skin forward slash templates forward slash wrappers, and then forward slash elements dash custom dash head dot html. So JavaScript files, the custom JavaScript files would also go in their JavaScript folder. So you would actually make a JavaScript folder inside of your skins folder as it's also explained here. Um, and again here, the uh, another explanation of what to do with the CSS. You don't want to copy base dot CSS from the design folder you want to make your own folder named skin.css. And so if you go back to my skin that I have here, if you go into, we're already in content skins, and name of my skin is super cool skin. Inside of that, there's a folder named styles. Inside of that, there's one single file, styles. And notice 73K in here. This is, this is a heavily, you can see all of my CSS. This and if we go back up for this begin, it also in some some JavaScript and script files here. Into template, you'll see the basic framework. We can go into pages. We can go into site for some of the HTML modifications we've made to this particular skin. Notice there is a custom 404 page. There's a custom home page. There's a custom international page. There's quite a few custom HTML right here. And this is for the site portion. Of it. We've broken down the pages into different sections. I'm trying to be as intuitive as possible um, to, to help you guys know where to make file edits at. Again, you want to make sure some useful tools. Uh, Firebug for Firefox is going to uh, help you out quite a bit. Um, once you actually develop the skin, again, the end client will be able to make changes on top of it using the editor and have those changes not affect the actual storefront itself. Um, or excuse me, the skin files themselves. It will affect the storefront, but your skin is not going to be touched if someone is using the tool. Obviously, if they're making changes on the back end, they have the ability to edit the skin. Um, 
For any additional questions, as far as concerned, Clinical Card does have phone and email sort of for its customers. If you have questions, feel free to let us know. But uh, again, this, this document um, we have rewritten recently to make it as thorough as possible. It was previously a seven-page document that we have turned into a 57-page document. And the concept has is, is been the same the entire time, you know, with the, the three different folders and then the cache folder that it compiled to. Um, but explaining things in detail and giving a little bit more of an example in, in certain scenarios, I believe, is, is going to help. And hopefully our has helped you guys as well. Um, if you have questions, again, let us know. But I appreciate your attendance here today, and we appreciate your interest in Pinnacle Cart. Thank you.